giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, Rakar Kadash. Shalom to the Lord's elect, and once again to another video. Hopefully you find this video edifying as well as exhorting to you brothers and sisters of the household of faith. So that'll be the title of this video. These other Israelite camps are set up to be stumbling blocks. These other Israelite camps, and I'm talking about these camps outside of Great Millstone and our true affiliates. In reality, they're set up to be stumbling blocks. Now, let me first start by defining the word stumbling block. Now, this was a, a topic that we um, spoke about among the many topics that we spoke about at the camp yesterday. You're looking at the still of our latest street ministry video. Uh, the title there, GMS Apostle Street Ministry is live um, August the 10th, 2024. That's our channel there, GMS Apostle Street Ministry. And for the two hours that we were out there teaching, we covered many topics as we normally do. But I would say that in my humble opinion, yesterday was very intense. Yahweh Shem Shai put a very intense spirit on all three of us. And um, uh, one of the topics that we discussed was the fact that these other camps are really set up as stumbling blocks. So let's go to the definition of the word stumbling block so we can proceed. All right, what's a stumbling block? And then I'm going to show you a scripture where the Heavenly Father himself, Yahweh, through his son Yahweh Shai, has set up stumbling blocks out here. But let's get the definition first. Now there's one that I read that I really liked. It's simple and straightforward. It is right here. Stumbling block, a circumstance that causes difficulty or hesitation. Um... Here it is right here. Miriam Webster. That was a good definition too. But this is the one that I like. Uh, stumbling block. An obstacle to progress. An obstacle to progress. Now what is progress in this thing of ours? Well, to receive the 100% truth and ultimately receive salvation. Okay, there's a scripture where it speaks about to receive the engrafted word which is able to save our souls right but see here's the thing you have to receive a hundred percent truth okay a hundred percent truth there can be no lie within the truth let's go to first john 2 and 21 first john 2 21 all right we'll start at 20 first john 2 and 20 it says but ye have an unction from the holy one what is that that's the holy spirit the holy spirit i want you brothers and sisters to understand if we, if we're speaking by the holy spirit there's no way we can teach a lie all right there's no way it's impossible to teach a lie if you're truly speaking by the Holy Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit working with you. Now, according to 1 John 2 and 20, that's exactly what we've been given, the Holy Spirit. That's, that's what the word unction means. It literally means the Holy Spirit. Okay? But you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. Matter of fact... Let's quickly go to 1 Corinthians 2 and 10 as a backup for 1 John 2 and 20. What does it say here? But the Heavenly Father, His name is Yahweh, and His Son's name is Yahweh Shai, have revealed them, what's the them? This understanding of these scriptures. The understanding of these scriptures, all these scriptures. They, the, the Heavenly Father have revealed them 
unto us by his spirit. There's that Holy Spirit again. That's that unction. Now, if we have that, it's impossible for us to teach lies. It's impossible. If we have the Holy Spirit constantly with us, we're going to teach 100% truth. Now, these you look at these other Israelite groups. They don't have the Holy Spirit with them constantly. They do things and they say things which shows that the Holy Spirit is not constantly working with them. That's why there, there's many errors in their doctrine, man. You know why they got many errors in their doctrine? Because the Holy Spirit is not constantly working with them. If the Holy Spirit is constantly working with you in the ministry, you're going to teach 100% truth. Those are facts. Because there can be, can't be no lie within the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is pure. Think about it. The Holy Spirit is pure. The Holy Spirit is, 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 is uh, uh, lie-free, okay? <laughs> Free of lies. The Holy Spirit is 100% pure truth, man. Okay? Let's read it again, man. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. But the Heavenly Father have revealed them unto us by His Spirit, as in the Holy Spirit. What, what is it them? The understanding of these scriptures. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of the Heavenly Father. There you go. And, and, and uh, the Apostle Paul, he spoke about spiritual gifts. Okay, and that's in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. So going back to 1 John 2 and 20, once again, but you have an unction, as in the Holy Spirit, from the, from the Holy One. Who's the Holy One? His name is Yahweh, his son's name is Yahweh Shai. And you know all things, right? As in 100% truth. All right, and... and um, Really, we're teaching the doctrine of Yahweh Shai. We're teaching the same doctrine that Yahweh Shai taught more than 2,000 years ago. And that's another thing we discussed at the camp. The fact that Yahweh Shai said, Lo, I am with you. Let's get that. That's another uh, comment we made at the camp yesterday. You, you really want to check out our, our street ministry uh, you know, that we recorded yesterday. Because the Holy Spirit had to say in a lot of things that is that is um, that is very um, important to being in this knowledge, to being in this truth, to understand what you're involved in, and the fact that you do have these other Israelite groups out here that are set up in reality to be stumbling blocks. Okay, Lo, I am with you. Let's get that. Now, these are the words of <clears throat> these are wor the words of Yahweh Shai, right? Now check this out. This is what Yahweh Shai said, and this applies to our ministry today. All right, when he said it, it first applied to the disciples, which became apostles, right? But it filters down to our ministry today. And this is what Yahweh Shai said, Matthew 28 and 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Why is that? Because the nation of Israel was scattered among all nations. Because we're really looking for the Israelites, in particular the elect of the nation of Israel. You got, you got Israelite groups out there that don't even teach that. That this knowledge, this truth is really only for the elect right now. Think about that, man. You got Israelite groups out there that don't teach that, that don't stress upon that, that this thing of ours is really only for the elect. Okay? It says, Matthew 28 and 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. You got groups out there that will tell you, and, and one of them is, is a very popular group. IUIC. And yesterday, Bishop Nathaniel in his his live uh, his live um, uh, class, right? He said this yesterday, and he was saying a lot of crazy stuff yesterday, and we we just we had to turn turn from it. We we couldn't we couldn't stomach it anymore. I mean, he was just going totally off. 
okay, and, and, and uh, the things that he was saying. One of the things that he said, which he's... <laughs> See, the thing is with this guy, Bishop Nathaniel, he's, a, he's like a consummate hypocrite, man. He said yesterday that anyone who teaches that we have the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son is on a low level. That's what he said. You can you can go to his um his uh live class recorded yesterday. I, I forgot the title of it. Right? And he actually said that. But this is the same guy that every now and then he'll say Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. So he's going back and forth, back and forth. And like Elder Pastor said, this is proof among many that he sold out, that he took the bag. That there's a that there's a hidden hand behind his back. He's someone's puppet. We know he right now he's Satan's puppet. <laughs> spirit of man, Yahweh Shemiah Shai got a, a reprobate spirit on that dude right now. And Yahweh Shemiah Shai can do that, man. He can put a reprobate spirit on you. Okay? But the, 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 the fact that he said that, you know, he straight up said that anyone that teaches that you have the true name, and he was, he was directing it to us, GMS, Great Millstone. Anyone that says that you have, that we have the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, right, is on a low level. And it's based upon some scripture he read where it says the Lord is going to give us His new name. And all you have to do is look up the word new is from the Greek kainos, which means refreshed. The reason why the Heavenly Father's name appears to be new is because the Heavenly Father is a power that hides himself. He'll hide himself for a period of time, then he'll come out and reveal himself. And usually when he comes out and reveals himself, it's through a, a, a great act of destruction. Case in point, uh, Pharaoh. Okay, Pharaoh. Matter of fact, let me show you what I'm talking about. The Lord used Pharaoh and the destruction of Pharaoh and his army to magnify his name, his name that was once hidden. All right, all that time that the Israelites were in slavery underneath the Egyptians, the, 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 the name of the Lord was hidden. It wasn't until the Heavenly Father raised up Moses and showed his power through Moses, right, that his name was magnified. His name became famous again, okay? Now, if you go in the book of Romans, I believe it's Romans, bear with me for a minute, I think it's the ninth chapter. Romans, the ninth chapter. Yeah, it is right here. Romans, the ninth chapter, the 17th verse. It says, For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. Right. So the, the, the Pharaoh that Moses dealt with was raised up. But he was raised up for a purpose. Okay. Okay. Let's read it. Let's keep reading. It says, That I might show my power in thee, in you, Pharaoh, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Right. In your destruction. In other words, I raised you up, Pharaoh, and, and the Lord um, shared that secret with his man Moses. All right. He told Moses, I'm going to raise Pharaoh up and I'm going to show my power in Pharaoh when I destroy him. And that's exactly what the Heavenly Father did. He destroyed Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. Right? And his name became what? His name became magnified. Now, prior before that, he, his name was hidden. Only a few Israelites knew his name. Okay? Our forefathers, they certainly knew his name. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That came before Moses. They knew his name. But on the whole, especially while, while the Israelites were in slavery underneath the Egyptians, we're talking a period of 400 years, the name of the Lord was relatively unknown until the Heavenly Father raised up 
Moses, right? And use Moses to come against Pharaoh. Ultimately, Pharaoh became destroyed. And the name of the Lord was what? Magnified. Just like he said here. Okay? And that's the very meaning of the word new, which means to be refreshed. The name of the Lord was once again refreshed. Okay? And that name is Yahweh. That's his name. Yahweh, which means he is. Okay? Like it says here, that I might show my power in thee and that my name, you, you clearly see in the scripture, it says that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. And that's exactly what happened on the destruction of Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. The name of the Lord was magnified. Now, how can we prove that? Let's go to Joshua. We can prove it by the conversation that Rahab the harlot had with the spies that was sent by Joshua. You see that? Look at the subheading. Rahab sheltered spies. Now listen to what Rahab said to the spies. Those were Israelites by the way. And they came to spy out the land. The land of Canaan which ultimately would become our land. The land of Israel. Now it's very important to hear what Rahab said to the spies which backs up what we just read in Romans the ninth chapter okay and how the Lord's name was magnified throughout all the earth this is Joshua 2 and 8 and before they were laid down she came up unto them upon the roof she had hid the spies on the roof all right because the men of, of uh, the city was looking for the spies to kill them because they knew that the spies were sent to spy out the land and eventually would take over the land right so Rahab hid them and because of that when we finally did come into the land of Israel which at that time was the land of Canaan um, and started destroying the Canaanites Rahab and her family were spared why because of the act of what Rahab did in hiding the spies okay so Joshua 2 and nine, and she said unto the men, I know, here's the point, I know that the Lord have given you the land. What land? The land of Canaan, which later would become known as the land of Israel. I know that the Lord have given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us. Why would she say that? She said that based upon what happened to Pharaoh and his army. What the Lord did to Pharaoh and his army. Magnifying his name, just like we read. In Romans the ninth chapter. Right? The Lord have given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you, you, you Israelites. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea. You see that? Now, didn't the Lord tell Moses, when I do this work on Pharaoh, it's going to magnify my name? Well, here's, here's proof of it. Here's Rahab, the harlot, proven what the Lord had told Moses, the prophet Moses, which the Apostle Paul talked about it. That's why the account is written in Romans, the ninth chapter. The Apostle Paul was drawing inspiration from it, where the Lord told Moses, look, when you see I, the, the piece of work I'm going to do on Pharaoh, that's going to magnify my name. The name that I gave to you, Moses, because remember, Moses asked the Heavenly Father, well, what is your name? You're going to send me to these Israelites. What's your name? And the Lord told Moses his name. I am, which we don't say I am. We say he is. Only the Heavenly Father can say I am. So he is in ancient Hebrew is Yahweh. So that's the name that he gave to Moses. And that's the name Moses was, was, was teaching it. Moses came to the Israelites in the name of the Heavenly Father. Moses made sure the first thing he asked the Heavenly Father is, what is your name? You're going to send me to these Israelites. What's your name? What name can I tell them when I go to them and explain to them that the Lord is getting ready to deliver you out of your captivity? What name should I tell them that I come in? And the Heavenly Father didn't get mad. He told Moses his name. 
But he also told Moses, look, I'm going to magnify my name and I'm going to use you to do it. You're going to go against Pharaoh and eventually Pharaoh will be destroyed in his army. And that's going to serve to magnify my name. So it's the same thing now, man. The modern day Pharaoh right now is Esau. We're in modern day Egypt, are we not? America. So once again, that same name, Yahweh, is going to be magnified. So how can you teach that we don't have the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son? That's a lie. And that's a major lie. That's not like one of your little lies. That's a major lie. So any group that's teaching that, we don't have the true name of the Heavenly Father, but every now and then they reference those names. Not only is that the leader of that group a hypocrite, but that group is set up as a stumbling block, an obstacle, an impediment to heed you from salvation, man. And that's why eventually Yahweh Hashem Yahshai going to destroy that group. I'm talking about the IUIC, man. And save the elect that he want out of that group and destroy that group, man. Because that group is set up to be a stumbling block to your faith. Okay, guaranteed. Again, let's read Joshua 2 and 10 one more time. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when ye came out of the when ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. But let's focus on the uh, first part of what Rahab said. We have heard what the Lord did for you in the Red Sea. That's all we got to. That's all we got to hold on to, right now. All right, <laughs> in this discussion. What the Lord did to Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. That served to magnify his name. That's the point. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, your power, he is the power in heaven above and in the earth beneath. Right. And that one act, right? That one main act of what happened to Pharaoh, because you got to remember at that time, the Egyptians, man, they were the top power at that time. The Egyptians, they were the top power. And what the Lord did to Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, man, <laughs> that served to magnify the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. The same name he gave to Moses when Moses asked him, what's your name? So now that's going to happen again. Remember, as it is written, there's no new thing under the sun. As a matter of fact, let's see if that's not so. Let's go from there to, uh, what is that, Jeremiah 16 and 14. Because we're in the new Egypt now, right? And Esau is the new Pharaoh. So once again, the Heavenly Father going to show his power in, in the destruction of the Edomite kingdom. Just like he destroyed the Egyptian kingdom, okay? Jeremiah, and once again, that action is going to serve... The action of the nuclear missiles, right? And and the, the the laser beams coming out the chariots. That action, once again, is going to serve to magnify the Heavenly Father's name, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. This time, the name of the only begotten Son is going to be magnified right along with the name of the Heavenly Father. Okay? Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Jeremiah 16 and 14, is it? Let me see. Yeah, hey, it is right here. Jeremiah 16 and 14. Look at the subheading. The Most High will restore them. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of, out of the land of Egypt. Remember what the, what, how the Lord did it? How did he bring up the, chil the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, from their bondage? By destroying Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, which served to magnify his name. So, the days are coming, right? Let's read it again. This is prophecy. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel, should say sons in the Hebrew, the sons of Israel out of the land of Egypt. This is talking about actual Egypt back then. But the Lord liveth, 
that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. The land of the north is talking about right here in America. The land of the north. So it's going to be said. So once again, Yahweh is going to magnify his name. The way that the Heavenly Father is going to bring up the children of Israel, beginning with the elect, how he's going to deliver them. That great deliverance, man. And how he's going to destroy this place by fire. The same way he destroyed Pharaoh and his army by water. Because they all drowned in the Red Sea. This time he's going to use fire. And this time his name is going to be magnified once again. The same name that he magnified during the time of ancient Egypt. So how can you teach that we don't have the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son? You're a goddamn liar, man. And your group is set up to be a stumbling block. Simply put. So let's keep reading. It says, Jeremiah 16 and 15. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel, the sons of Israel, from the land of the north. It's talking about right here in America. The majority of the Israelites are right here in America. Okay? Oh, and the, great, the greatest deliverance is going to take place right here in America. This is, this is the center attraction right here. This, this place, Babylon the Great, also known as spiritually Egypt. We can read about that in, in uh, Revelation. The book of Revelation, I, I believe it's the 11th chapter, which is spiritually known as Egypt. Sodom and Egypt. Is that not written? So, once again, the Lord is going to deliver his people, the sons of Israel, from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. That's all across the world. And I will bring them again into their land and that I gave unto their fathers. The same thing that happened during the time of Egypt. We went back to our land, the land of Israel. It's going to happen all over again from this modern day Egypt. So what's the point? The point is that action is going to serve to magnify the name of the Heavenly Father and his son. Okay? So now, let's go back to Matthew 28 and 19. So, this is why Yahweh Shai said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. The same name that's getting ready to be magnified, like it was during the time of ancient Egypt. We're supposed to teach that name. The name is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. We're supposed to teach it. This is what Yahweh Shai said. He said, Go teaching them in the name of the father now if we don't have the name of the father how can we how can this prophecy be be fulfilled how can yahweh commandment to us right the, the apostles the prophets the teachers of this ministry how can it be fulfilled if we don't have the name of the father how can we do this it the yahweh said teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father what is the name of the father proverbs 30 what is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell? If you truly instructed the right way, the correct way, you, you'll be able to tell the name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. And you'll be able to fulfill what Yahweh I said here. Teaching them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Rekakwadash. Rekakwadash. That's why we say Yahweh, Barsham, Yahweh Shai, Barsham, Rekakwadash. Um, Bahasham or Bahasham means in the name. Bahasham. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. The Heavenly Father in the name of the Only Begotten Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Exactly what Yahweh Shai told us to do here. Now, if any group ain't doing that, listen good. If any group is not doing what Yahweh Shai said to do here, they're not teaching the true name of the Father, the Son, and the, and the Holy Spirit, then that group is, is, is set up as a stumbling block. You're not getting 100% truth from that group. You're not getting what you need, which is 100% truth. So that group is set up as a stumbling block, set up as an obstacle, a hindrance to progress. Okay? Just like the word stumbling block. You know, the word, what it means. A hindrance to progress, an obstacle. Okay? It says, uh, read on, it says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Yeah, just right there, he commanded us to teach in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He commanded us to do that. It was first given to the disciples, which became apostles, but it filters down to us. He wouldn't tell us anything different that he told, that he told his apostles 
which became pro, um, which became uh, disciples, or his disciples, which became pro, um, his disciples, which became apostles. He wouldn't tell us anything different than he told them. That's the point I'm making. And he told them to baptize, in other words, to teach. Another word for baptizing is to teach, right? To teach in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So you can't fulfill that if, if you teaching we don't saying we don't have the name of the Father and the Son. That's a damn lie. Again, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now here, here's the point. No, an added point rather. Uh, and lo, meaning look. I am with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. Now, how is Yahushua with us? Through the Holy Spirit. That's how. Through his Spirit. The Spirit of Yahushua is with us, man. And if the Spirit of Yahushua is with you, you're going to teach 100% truth. Why is that? Because Yahushua himself had 100% truth. Think about it. Yahushua had 100% truth. There was no error in Yahushua's doctrine. Not one. So if the Holy Spirit is really working with us, if Yahweh is truly with us, like he said here, I am with you even unto the end of the world, then there's no way we can teach a lie. Everything we teach is going to be 100% truth. Why? Because Yahweh is with us, man. Was that in the first Philippians 4 and 13? I can do all things through Yahweh which strengthen me. So if Yahweh is with us, we're going to teach 100% truth. And I'm here to tell you, man, Great Millstone and our true affiliates, Yahweh is with us, man. And that's why we're able to teach 100% truth. So we're not set up as no goddamn stumbling block. However, these other Israelite groups that don't have Yahweh with them, the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not really working with them, they are set up to be a stumbling block. And it's, it's, it's incumbent upon you brothers and sisters out there to spot those stumbling blocks and avoid them. Okay, you got Israelite groups out here that are set up to be stumbling blocks. It's, 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 it's very simple. And one of the main reasons why is because the spirit of Yahweh is not dealing with them. The spirit of Yahweh is not dealing with them, man. Yahweh said, Lo, I just read it to you. He said, Lo, I am with you even to the end of the world. All right, and what, that's the time period we're in right now, the end. So the spirit of Yahweh is with us, man. So if that's the case, we're going to speak 100% truth, just like Yahweh spoke 100% truth. There was no error in Yahweh doctrine, not one. So think about that. Now, let's get a little into these stumbling blocks, show you that these stumbling blocks are out here, and the Heavenly Father have set it up that way. Now, you may ask, well, why would the Heavenly Father set up stumbling blocks? It doesn't make sense. It does make sense because the path of truth, and I'm going to read that scripture to you, the path of truth is supposed to be narrow. It's not supposed to be a wide path. In the Apocrypha, the angel told Esdras that the path of truth is so narrow, only one man can tread it at a time. One man can tread it at a time. That's how narrow this path of truth is. So what makes the path of truth narrow? The fact that you've got all these different Israelite groups out here that are really set up as stumbling blocks. They make the path of truth narrow. They make the path of truth very hard to find. It's not supposed to be easy to find. You understand? That's why you got your stumbling blocks out here. And you're not going to learn this from any other Israelite group. They, they, the, the Holy Spirit has, is not working with them on that kind of level. For goodness sakes, they don't even teach that the Lord is only dealing with the elect. So that shows you what kind of level they're on. Okay, Jeremiah, the sixth chapter. I think it's the 21st verse. The Lord have said, look, understand this. The Lord, Yahweh, his name, Yahweh, his name is Yahweh, his son's name is Yahweh Shai. They have set up stumbling blocks out here, man, to cause guys to fall. Guys that they don't want. Guys that are not part of the elect. Okay. This is very real. Jeremiah 6 and 21, I think it is. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith who? The Lord, which his name is Yahweh. 
and his son's name is Yahushai. That's a hundred percent truth right there. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people. And we just looked up the definition of stumbling block. It is right here. An obstacle to progress. So, the Lord have laid what? Obstacles to progress. What is progress? Getting this truth, 100% of it, and ultimately receiving salvation. Because you got 100% truth. If you got 100% truth, and you're dealing with 100% truth, you're going to receive salvation. Okay? <laughs> So the Heavenly Father got obstacles out here from indiv to keep individuals, certain individuals, from not receiving the hundred percent truth, which would lead to their salvation. Right? Wait a minute. Let's go to Isaiah six and nine, and see if that's not so. Isaiah six and nine. All right. It says. It says this, and he said, go and tell this people, go and teach, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. So the Heavenly Father is out here blinding in certain individuals from receiving the 100% truth. And some of those individuals are in your different Israelite groups. That's why those different Israelite groups were set up. One of the many reasons is to keep the non-elect, members of the non-elect, to keep them from receiving the truth, the 100% truth, that they may be healed, converted and be healed. Okay, that can apply can apply to this scripture here as well. And we know the two thirds, they, they're gonna be um spiritually blinded, period, from receiving the truth. But remember this, and I always say this the two thirds start with certain guys that call themselves Israelites, your false apostles, your false teachers, your false prophets. They're part of the two thirds, they're gonna receive the same judgment. That the two-thirds are going to receive. How about that? Which is what? To be burnt by fire. The, the judgment. The judgment of fire. That Yahweh Shai is coming with. With those nuclear missiles and those chariots. Okay? The two-thirds. We know that as it is written. The prophecy. Zechariah 13 and 8. Two-thirds shall be cut off and die. The two-thirds begin with those. That claim they are Israelites. But are really not. They're, they're liars, they're false apostles, they're false teachers. They're not part of the elect. Right? They, they, they start off the two-thirds. Then filters down to those Isra Israelites out there that are just of the world. Know very little about this truth. Okay? So reading on, it says... Then said I, Lord, how long? Yeah, how long are these people going to be in such a stupefied state? Beginning with those that claim they're in the truth. How long are they going to be in that state? Let's keep reading. And he answered, until the cities be wasted without an inhabitant. That's the nuclear destruction. The judgment of fire that Yahweh Shai is coming with. Through the nuclear destruction, nuclear missiles, and the chariots of the Lord. Both bringing fire. So that's how long they're going to be blinded until that very moment of destruction. And he answered until the cities be wasted without an inhabitant and the houses without man and the land be utterly what? Desolate. There you go. That's what Yahweh is coming to do. Is he not coming to make America utterly desolate? That's what the prophecy says. Now going back to Jeremiah 6 and 21. Therefore thus saith the Lord, behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people. So these camps are set up out here. These other Israelite camps outside of GMS and our true affiliates that are not teaching you 100% truth, that are teaching you lies and refuse to, to correct their doctrine, they're set up to be stumbling blocks, right, to the ones the Lord don't want. Because remember, they're not going to convince the elect 
as it is written, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. These camps that are set up to be stumbling blocks, they're not going to see, deceive the very elect. It's impossible. You can't deceive the elect. The elect are going to see right through them and keep on moving. They're going to be moving with the group that does have 100% truth. And that happens to be Great Millstone and our true affiliates. Okay? Now, is everyone in Great Millstone and our true affiliates, are they all part of, uh, everyone is part of the elect? We're not saying that. you got certain individuals in Great Millstone and our true affiliates that are not right, man. And eventually, they're going to fall off. Okay? They're not, and the reason being is they're simply not part of the elect. But the majority of the elect would be here in Great Millstone and our true affiliates. Those are facts. Because those other Israelite groups, man, they, they, the kind of shit that they teach, the members of the elect wouldn't believe it, man. Not for a second. All right, they'd see right through it. Because it's not possible to deceive the very elect. But going back to Jeremiah 6 and 21, Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the, the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. You see? The neighbor and his friend shall what? Shall perish. Because of what? Because of the stumbling blocks. These camps are set up out here to be stumbling blocks. These false camps. These Israelite camps. And I dare say all of them outside of great millstone and affiliates they're all set up to be stumbling blocks just look at that doctrine they don't have a hundred percent truth nor do nor do they care to their attitude is no group can have a hundred percent truth well how do you explain yahweh shai didn't he have a hundred percent truth yes he did now if the spirit of yahweh shai is still with us in the planet earth like he said then the, whatever group the spirit of yahweh shai is dwelling with that group is going to have a hundred percent truth it just makes sense because Yahweh Shah himself had 100% truth. And that group happens to be great millstones. As a matter of fact, Yahweh Shah himself was a great millstone. The scriptures say he's great, and the scriptures also compare him to a millstone. Put it together, great millstone. All right? And we got that name through the Holy Spirit. Just like everything else we've gotten. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. Just like everything else we've gotten, we, we even got our name through the Holy Spirit. Great millstone great millstone okay so it's just something that i wanted you brothers and sisters to consider in this ministry of ours the fact that and this is based upon the conversation we had yesterday at the camp saturday the fact that you have these other israelite groups set up to be stumbling blocks in reality that's why they're around that's why as it is written the heavenly father's long suffering he's tolerating them because they're fulfilling prophecy too. These these uh, <clears throat> these false apostles, these false teachers, these false prophets. Just like Peter said. <clears throat> Let's go to Peter. Second Peter, two and one. Second Peter two and one says this. But there were, but there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. Why, why are there false teachers among us? Because they're set up as stumbling blocks. To deceive the non-elect. They can't deceive the elect. But they are set up to deceive the non-elect. Because at the end of the day. The Lord is only looking for the elect. Goes back to something Yahweh I said to that woman at the well. Which that woman was a heathen. You got certain Israelite groups teaching that the woman was an Israelite. No, the woman at the well that Yahweh I had a conversation with, where he talked about the true worshippers, that woman was a heathen. That woman was not an Israelite, but you got it you got Israelite groups teaching that she was an Israelite. So there, there's my there's another example right there. Okay, Yahweh Shai said he, he talked about what? The true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. What's another title for the, the elect? The true worshippers. Because essentially that's what they are. And that the true worshippers would have what? A hundred percent truth. The true worshippers would have a hundred percent truth. And they wouldn't deal with any lies in any form, man. They're the true worshippers. Hell. So Second Peter two and one, but there were false prophets also among the people. 
even as they shall be false teachers among you. That's these false camps out here with their false doctrine. Who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. There you go. What's an example of that? We don't have the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. That's a damnable heresy. Meanwhile, the same guy who says that, that freaking hypocrite, every now and then he'll mention Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. When he was sick, like El Pastor has been saying, when he was sick, you know, near his deathbed, what names did he call upon? You better believe he called upon Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. He didn't call upon no God and Jesus Christ. Because he, know, he knows different. Fast forward more than 25 years ago, this is the same clown hypocrite, clown hypocrite, that's right, that taught the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son passionately. Okay, him and uh, Elder Banyamian of the HODC. There's the video, you can still find the video on YouTube, where Bishop Nathaniel goes into the name of the Heavenly Father, His Only Begotten Son, heavy. He goes into the Hebrew, the whole nine. So fast forward more than 25 years later, all of a sudden we don't have the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. That guy is a freaking hypocrite. And he's the leader of a group that's set up to be a stumbling block to you Israelites out there. But a lot of you are blinded by his gimmicks and his the, the super fancy garments and all that nonsense, man. The super fancy garments, the gimmicks, the superfluous activities like the marching and all that nonsense, something the Lord never told us to do. A lot of you are blinded by that shit. And you really think it's righteous. You really think the Heavenly Father is dealing with, with that group. Well, we're here to tell you different. The Heavenly Father is only dealing with those that speak 100% truth. So there you go, man. There shall be false teachers among you. Privately shall bring in what? Damnable heresies. Even denying the Lord that brought them. What's an example of that? Denying his name and his son's name. Is that not an example? Of denying the very Lord that brought you. And bring upon themselves what? Swift destruction. That's what's going to happen to that group. Swift destruction. Not just them. Any group that's not teaching 100% truth. That's teaching lies. And they can't be bothered to be corrected. They've hardened their hearts. Hardened their necks as it says. Because they're often being reproved. That's what the scriptures say. He that is often reproved hardeneth his neck. A lot of these camps, the leaders of these camps, these Israelite camps that know they're going off, that have been showed they're going off constantly, time and time again, by GMS, Great Millstone, we're the main group that shows these other, group, other groups are going off. Because most of these groups, they have that go along to get along policy. Oh, we're not going to say anything. We're just going, going to go along with them to get along. We don't have that policy here at Great Millstone. If you're going off, we're going to tell you, as, as the scripture have said, the Lord have set us up to be watchmen and to give warning to the wicked. All right, that's what is said in Ezekiel, the third chapter. To give warning to the wicked. And if he don't turn from his wickedness, he shall what? He shall surely die. And if you, you, you're teaching lies in your doctrine, that's wickedness, man. That's wickedness. You're supposed to teach 100% truth. All truth. And then it goes on to say here, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. Many. It says many. So that's why you have your stumbling blocks out there. Because remember, once again, the truth, the path of truth is not for many. It's only for a few. The path of truth is not for many. It's only for a few. That's another thing that they don't teach. Because they're all about profit. You know, they want to get as many heads in their congregation as possible. Because the more heads they get, the more money they make. But is it is that what this truth is about? Getting as many heads as possible? Nope. It's about looking for the elect. The quality men, man. The true worshipers. For his, as Yahweh Shai said. For him do the Father seek if such to worship him. As Yahweh Shai said. Man. That Israelite groups, they're not applying that principle. So they're, they're, they're stumbling blocks. Matthew 7 Let's find out, and we're going to end with this. Let's find out how narrow this path of truth is. Matthew 7 and 13. Look at the subheading, the narrow and wide gates. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Straight is the position of difficulty. That's another thing we tell you, brothers and sisters. When you come into this knowledge, you're going to catch hell. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. That's Ecclesiasticus 2 and 1 in the Apocrypha. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. 
Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when you're changed to what? A lower state. We, we constantly teach that scripture. The mother Israelite groups, they really don't teach that. They tell you, they, they actually, they go into the prosperity doctrine. They're no different than them wacky-tacky churches out here that push the same shit. We're not in the time of prospering carnally. We're in the time of prospering spiritually, not carnally. We're going to get that in the kingdom. The spiritual riches come first, then the carnal riches. We're going to get that in the kingdom. The gold, the silver, and all of that. The scriptures tell us that. Right now is not the time to be sitting in the lap of, of, of uh, prosperity. That's going to destroy you from the faith. Yahweh I said the best. Hardly a rich man shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. The riches shall not be able to deliver you in the day of wrath. That is written. So what sense does it make for you to take this knowledge as truth and, and turn it into a, a house of merchandise? Right? Just so you can receive mega profits. Right? When, when the scripture clearly says, Gold and silver shall not be able to deliver them from the Lord's wrath. And anyway, going back to Matthew 7, 13. Enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. That's why you got all these Israelite camps out here that are set up as stumbling blocks. These different Israelite camps that are not teaching you 100% truth. They're set up as a stumbling block. And it's easy to find out if they're teaching you 100% truth. All you got to look at, at is their doctrine. All right? For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. So many are going to be deceived by these stumbling blocks. Because straight is the gate, straight meaning a position of difficulty, and narrow is the way. That's why you got your obstacles. That's why you got your stumbling blocks. The way of truth is what? narrow and it's so narrow only one man can tread it at a time that that secret is revealed by the angel to Ezra, revealed to us how narrow this path of truth is because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it right because many are deceived by these stumbling blocks but they're appointed to be deceived they're not part of the elect the, the few that be that find that find it is the elect. They're going to find the truth, the 100% truth. And they're going to stick to that 100% truth and, be, and ultimately be saved, be delivered. You see? All right, so I'm going to end it there. I believe I've said enough. Hopefully you were edified by it. Hopefully you get the understanding from this video that, they, like it says in the title, these other Israelite camps... The ones that don't have 100% truth are set up to be stumbling blocks. That's, it's, that's what they are. That's what they are. They're set up to be stumbling blocks. That's why they teach what they teach. That's why they do what they do. For goodness sakes, you got camps teaching you can have sex on the Sabbath. When the scriptures say, remember the Sabbath day, this is a law. One of the top laws that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh gave to our, our forefather Moses, which he gave to us. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it what? To keep it holy. But you got groups teaching you can have sex on the Sabbath. When the, the, the law clearly tells you when you have sex with a woman, you're unclean to the evening. So is that a definition of keeping something holy? <laughs> you, you, you are unclean until the evening. You have sex, sex with, 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 with a woman. You're unclean to the evening. But these guys say you can have sex on the Sabbath. When you're supposed to be in a holy mind state on the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We're in the Sabbath right now. Anyway. That's it. And I'll see you in the next video.